up everybody this is Sans today I'm going to show you how to install subcast on your Mac uh, by using crossover as you can see I'm currently running Snow Leopard Mac operating system 10 version 10.6.7 and of course we have the laundry list of items that you're going to need all these items are available in the description below the video so first thing that you need to need to do is uh, go to the crossover website provided here and download either the demo or else the full version So you can see right here, here's the free trial or else buy Crossover now. I already have downloaded it and installed it. What I have is Crossover Pro version 10. Alrighty, so once we uh, fire Crossover up, this is the screen that will launch. You can of course have don't show this window at startup. I always let it launch, it's easy enough. First thing we need to do is install a bottle. So we're going to click on configure, manage bottles. We're going to click on this plus sign right here. And we're going to create a new bottle. I'm going to go ahead and title this one Windows XP. And a new bottle type, make sure that you have the Win XP selected. In some of the older tutorials, you notice that they were doing it with Windows 98. I think that with the new version of uh, Sobcast that was released, it's only Windows XP compatible, and that's the issue that you may run into, or at least that's the issue that I had. By doing it this way, I've been able to run it successfully, uh, so I suggest just doing the Windows XP bottle. Go ahead and click Create. It's going to go ahead and create the bottle. Essentially what it's doing is uh, creating an emulator, uh, kind of like uh, a Nintendo emulator for your phone. It's basically creating a fake Windows environment where it can uh, load and process different files. So we'll give this a minute while it loads up. Alrighty, so here we go. You can see that up here it's currently scanning to make sure everything looks good. Now it says that it's ready. If you click on the Applications tab right here, it's going to show you everything that you have installed within this bottle. As you can see right now, we only have the Crossover HTML engine installed. So what we need to do now is install Internet Explorer 7. Again, in some of the older tutorials, they were installing Internet Explorer 6. You're still free to install Internet Explorer 6 if you want to, but I've tried both ways, and uh, Internet Explorer 7 works well. Uh, one reason why I do prefer Internet Explorer 7 is that uh, if you're getting online and you're trying to find a different channel that you want to, uh, that you want to launch, you have issues if you try to do it from Safari. But if you do it from Internet Explorer, um, it's it's a lot easier. Um, so I would prefer Internet Explorer 7 over Internet Explorer 6. Again, it's just personal preference. So there's two ways of going about installing software. First way is clicking Install Software right here, which brings you up to this dialog box. Or else you can go ahead and do it from the main screen by clicking on the Install Windows Software. Again, it brings you up to the same menu either way. Under Supported Applications, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we see Internet Explorer 7. Right here, you can see that it's going to download the package from the Crossover website. What we need to install is uh, into the existing Windows XP bottle, not a new Windows XP bottle. So go ahead and click Edit, click Windows XP, and then click Install. Again, you need to make sure that you're going to install into the current existing Windows XP bottle that we just created. All right, so now we come up with our uh, Windows XP dialog boxes. We're going to want to click yes. Adobe will come up here in a second and of course we're going to install Adobe as well. Next. Of course we accept the terms. Next, you can go ahead and leave this blank. Install. Finish. Install. Done. Then we're going to go ahead and click next right here. Of course, we accept. Don't don't click this. Uh, if you're running the Mac, obviously you're probably going to be using Safari as your primary browser, so don't worry about this. Go ahead and click next.
All right, now we're going to go ahead and click restart now. Alrighty, so now what you'll see is that Internet Explorer is now loaded into our accessories file. So by default, Crossover goes ahead and creates uh, its own file folder where it's going to store all of uh, all of your different Windows applications. We're going to go ahead and close this window. You can see that it says the installation is complete. We're going to go ahead and click Done. And then again, we're going to go ahead and install Windows software. Now what we're going to be doing is installing unsupported software. So you can see right here under the Unsupported Applications tab at the bottom, there are community supported applications and uh, other applications. What we're going to do is we're going to select other application and then this way we're going to manually navigate to our Windows Media Player 9. So you can see right here I have Windows Media Player 9. We're going to use this installer. Again, make sure that you're clicking the new source as Windows XP. So this is going to be installing into that same bottle where we just installed Internet Explorer 7. Go ahead and click install. Click next, I accept. Alright, so you'll notice that it says it was not possible to complete setup. Go ahead and click finish, it's fine. And there's Windows Media Player. If you want to double check and make sure that it's actually working, you can go ahead and double click it. Click next next finish there it is Windows Media Player has been successfully installed go ahead and close that out for now go ahead and click done here alright go ahead and close this window out too install Windows software once again we're going to scroll down to the bottom we're going to click on other application we're going to select and what we're going to install now are the Windows Media Player 9 codecs which are located right here go ahead and push use this installer Again, we want to make sure that we're clicking Edit here. We're selecting the bottle where we installed Media Player 9 in Internet Explorer 7. Go ahead and click Install. Push Yes. Push Yes. And there it is. They've been successfully installed. And we're done. If you were going to elect to use VLC, as your media player instead of Windows Media Player. You're going to go ahead and select other applications. VLC. Now this is VLC for Windows. We're going to use this installer. We're going to select Edit. Of course we're going to put it back in that Windows XP bottle as we've done previously and click Install. Now for me I found that Windows uh, Media Player actually works uh, a little more smoothly than VLC does. When I'm using my Mac, I love VLC, but uh, in this case, when we're running an emulator, VLC for Windows has an issue where you have to loop uh, continuously. Um, you know, again, it's personal preference. Some people may like it, some people may not. Now, this is really important. What you want to make sure that you do is you uncheck this Run VLC Media Player box. Uh, and go ahead and click Finish. The reason why is that Crossover simulates a Windows reboot for us. Um, so it's important that we, we let it do that. We'll let it finish up here. While we sit here waiting, there's also another program out there called TVU. TVU actually isn't a bad program either. It's listed here, down at the very bottom. Uh, you can get it from this link below, which is also included in the description, of course. Uh, TVU is Mac native, so luckily you won't have to run Crossover for its run. All right, so our install of VLC is complete. We're going to go ahead and click Done. Now what we need to do is install Subcast. Again, we're going to click on Unsupported Applications, Other Application. We're going to go ahead and select. Choose the installer file. Here it is right here. We're going to use this installer. Again, make sure that you're installing within the Windows XP bottle that we created at the very beginning. Install.
Go ahead and push OK. Next. We agree. Next. Go ahead and leave this in here if you want. It doesn't really make a difference. We're not really going to be using IE and uh, Mac OS X anyways, so shouldn't make too much of a difference. All right, so once again, make sure that you uncheck the Run box right here. Click Finish. You'll notice right here that it's simulating the Windows uh, reboot. There we go. It says it's done, and here it is right here. All right, so let's go ahead and just click Done. And there's a couple of different ways to run the software. Once you log into Crossover, again, it brings you up to this welcome screen. You can click right here on Run Install Software, and it has all the different folders that we have everything installed in. Again, IE 7 is in the Accessories folder. We have Sobcast, and then, of course, uh, for our VLC stuff, it's located in this folder. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up Sobcast. And we're going to go ahead and log in as Anonymous. If you wanted to, you could log in using your current account if you have one created. For this example, we're just going to be logging in as Anonymous. Alrighty, so here we are. It brings you to the home screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this out of Media Player uh, first, just to show you guys. I'm going to click on Live Channels. Go ahead and click on uh, NHK just to test it. You can notice that right here, this is our buffer bar. So uh, as it gets closer, we're going to start to see a picture come through. And this is, of course, using Media Player 9, as I've said before. Uh, so you can see that right here, everything seems to be working. Of course, if you wanted to switch to full screen, you could right here. And it may be a little bit laggy for the first 30 seconds to the first minute or so, but eventually it'll catch up. If you want to stop the broadcast, go ahead and push the stop button right there. Alrighty, so how do we do VLC? Well, if you go in here and you click on the Option button, we're going to want to use my own media player. We're going to select it, and we need to navigate to where it is. So if we go up one directory, and then we click on Video LAN, VLC, and then right here, with VLC.exe is what we're looking for. You know, go ahead and click Open, and then Apply. All right, now in order for this to take effect, we're going to have to shut down, stop cast, and then we're going to have to reopen it once more. All right, so we're logging in as anonymous. All right, so now the key with this, you guys, is that it's only going to let you watch it for about 10 seconds before it disappears when we start playing. So you're going to see that it's going to start buffering here in a minute. So there it is again, Windows Media Player. And then you see this button right here, if you click that, it's going to go ahead and launch it in VLC instead. I'm going to select OK. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. It's going to just automatically shut off. So there it goes, so it stopped. So the issue is that you need to select this button right here, loop. And there you go. It's going to keep on looping it over and over again. Now we got to wait for a minute for it to, uh, to catch back up to, to the feed. Uh, but this is the key right here is to click the loop button. Now about every 10 seconds is going to take a minute before it catches up, which is why I prefer Media Player. I think that it's a little bit smoother uh, to use. Of course, that's just my opinion. If you prefer VLC, then go ahead and have at it. Let's go ahead and close this out. For me, I'm going to go ahead and put Use Default Media Player. Go ahead and push OK. And that's it. Alright, so again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment. And uh, hope that this works for you.